Welcome back. Super excited to move to the next lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to work with the grid system. So we understand a little bit about the bootstrap grids. Okay. Here, it's important to understand that before you actually design your app or your website, you need to understand the grid system and see how it actually applies before you start building or placing images or creating menu bars and other elements on the artboard or your canvas area. So what do I mean by grids? So let me go ahead and first demonstrate. So here's my first frame, which in fact is the center one here because that's the one selected. And then my next frame is the third one from the left, one, two, and three. And then here's my first one. So my first one should be in order. And this is another quick tip and important. You need to be able to work in order right from left to right or top to bottom with the frames as well as objects within the frame okay so keep that in mind if you want to be a good designer a quick tip for you so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the entire frame and the objects and just drag it to the top here so I'm going to move this to the first and then this is my second and then my third which is fine good so I'm going to call this let's say screen one and this is another good practice. This is screen two. And then I have my screen three. Perfect. And as a homework quick, just go ahead and rename all of the objects as well in that order. So objects would be from left to right or top to bottom, either way. So just be organized. Perfect. So let me go ahead and select my screen one here. And notice on the right side under the design tab I have the layout grid okay so I'm gonna click on the plus sign next to layout and currently the grid is at 10 pixels and notice the grid lines show I can click on the grid bring out the layout grid and I have the options to either select columns and rows so if I like to display columns on my artboard notice by default it's five columns I can increase the columns to let's say 12 and again I can have a maximum of 12 as per bootstrap okay so as soon as I enter 10 columns it creates 10 columns for me so it depends on the your requirement and the app that you're designing or the website that you're designing I can also increase or decrease the gutter gutter is the space between the columns right so if I say 10 you would notice that the space decreases between columns the type is of course stretch left or center I'm going to keep it stretch so I can take a look at from both left side or the right side it's equally spaced out I can change the colors because if you're working with grid that's one grid you can add other grids as well so for example, if I were to add another frame to it, and this is again getting into more intermediate and advanced, but it's good to know. So if you need to add another rectangle, for example, within this frame, you can work with grids separately from the main grid system. Okay, good. All right, so we understand what grids look like, right? And depending on your own requirement, you can adjust the grids accordingly. Similarly with rows, I have count of 10 rows with a gutter of 10 and so on. So here's the real benefit of using grids. And if you have not noticed already, you can because my menu rectangle here and my footer rectangle here are different sizes. Okay. So the grids allow you to actually maintain these sizes and just kind of make sure visually what the sizes are of your elements on the screen and where to place those elements on the screen. And that's the power of using the grid in Figma. So for instance, let me in fact select the rectangle here on my screen one. Notice the size is 416 by 54. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can actually see. There we go. And my footer is 416 by 60 obviously there's a difference in size using grids I can snap these rectangles to the grid itself 
So notice it just kind of snaps it to it. So now the size of my footer is 416 by 72 pixels. And if I scroll up, I can similarly snap the top grid, which is 416 by 72. So a real benefit of using grids. In addition to, of course, using constraints and components that I demonstrated in earlier lectures. Very important. So now you notice that you have a perfect size menu with the same size of footer. Similarly, you could do the same for the rest of the screens. However, importantly, you want to be able to do this as components, right? And copy those screens to all of the rest of the screens. And that's the best practice. Otherwise, you'd have to go and manually change all of these screens, right? So I'm not going to go over through constraints because I've already done so. Refer back to my lecture on constraints as well as the components. That's important. So understanding grids is important. So let me bring up the grid menu again. Now I can add additional grids. So right now there's only one grid, right, to the screen. If I choose to, I can add another grid by clicking on the plus sign. Notice it brings me a second set of grid lines. And here I can specify maybe a column of two. So that way, now my screen size on my artboard the actual frame is split into two equal columns, right? So this is helpful if I need to, let's say, place an image, for example, on this side, right? So I can simply snap to this side of the grid and then create another rectangle and snap to the other one. Or better yet, while I'm doing this, I'm going to demonstrate the components. So the best way is to actually remove it from your actual frame and then create a component, right? So I'm going to select the actual rectangle, create a component. And once I've created a component, I'm going to bring it back into the canvas area or my artboard, hold my Alt key, and then duplicate it. Okay, that's the best practice. And that's what I was referring to, but I figured I'd just show it to you again. Perfect. So now I have two sets of rectangles, right? So here's my main component. That's my first one. And then here's a copy of it. So whatever happens to this part of the first component, of course, automatically is displayed on the other one. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and place these back onto my grid here. Perfect. And let me go ahead and change the color so it's easier for us to actually see. There we go. So that way, it's easier to work with, right? So you understand the components. And of course, I can work with constraints as well if I need to. I can snap, make sure it's left and right. So it's constrained to left and right. And same thing with this rectangle as well. There we go. So now, if I were to select my screen and just kind of go left or right, notice it is responsive, OK? So that way, it's easier to work with using the grids. I can, of course, turn off the grids. So if I don't want to display the grids, I can just click on this I, and it just kind of hides the grids. And now my design is pretty good, intact. It's very responsive. So that way, it's important to understand the grid system when you're designing your app. So as a good practice, what I would do is, is start off with a blank canvas, right? Bring up the frame and then create these grids. So once you've created the grids, that gives you the structure, right? So a wireframe. And based on those grids, you can start inputting elements, objects, menu bar, buttons, and so on. So go ahead and practice with this as a homework. Create a new canvas, open up a new file, implement these grids work with different column sets, revise the bootstrap functionality of the grids, the rules. And then with this, let's move to the next lesson.